Okay, Timmy, you wanted the white. I believe the white has arrived. You'll be here for the unboxing. And take a look and see what we got here. This says it's a guitar. So let's open the box up and see what it really is. If they sent us the right guitar. A lot of stuffing. Head cover. Nicely protected. Let's see if we can get this out. Let's pull it up. There's a whammy bar that you wanted so badly. And here's a guitar. I think that's everything that's in the box. So we've got a whammy bar, Timmy, and a key to adjust the neck. That's going to be very important. To make sure all that stuff moves along to you eventually. Let's take a little knife and we'll pop this tape off. Make it easy to open and we'll reveal. Oh, it's all tucked in nice. It's in a super deluxe wrapper. There's the headstock. There's the neck with rose wood. And here comes your principal request, young man. It is white. They got it right. They got the white right. They protected the knob. That's good. So there it is, young man. And we got the new pick guard over there. We're going to swap out. Here's the back. We're going to change that to a white one. We'll put new strings on. This looks good. How's the neck look? The neck looks pretty doggone good already. So what we'll do is uh, I got another guitar on the bench. I got to swap out. And we'll do the restoration that I was going to start that I haven't really even started yet. We'll get this guy off the bench and make room for Timmy's guitar. Okay, so hang on. Okay, Timmy, we got it on the bench, okay? So there's the Squire Fender Strat by Affinity. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this pickguard to the white. Still got the plastic coating on the replacement one. We're going to flip that over from black and make it white. There's a black cover on the back. We've got a white cover to replace it, so that'll be all right. We're going to replace the string trees up here, which are the cheaper ones that are on the guitar that it comes with that are kind of crummy. We're going to fix those up and get rid of them. We're going to switch over the, the um, volume control and stuff to white because I've got some white ones, and it'll all match up pretty good. Um, we'll just get busy with that now. We'll take the strings off and get to work. Okay, Timmy, this is right out of the box. I just tuned it up. What we're going to do now is just double check the tune. We're going to make sure everything works the way that it's supposed to out of the box. And then we'll set it up to play well. That's the first, the neck amp, I mean the neck pickup. this middle pickup alone. Alright, if we go back to the fourth position, that's the middle and the back. Fifth 
position is all the way back. That's the humbucker. That picks up that bottom pick. Right out of the box before we've really touched anything. This is a made in China. Okay, it's very good. Um, very good. The frets are beautiful. We don't have to touch them. All we got to do is some basic stuff, and then we'll do a final setup and get everything right and playing nice for you. Okay. So here we go. We're back to the bench. All right, we're back on the bench. The next thing we're going to do, since we passed our first basic inspection, to know that. Everything works just like it's supposed to, the way it come in. We're going to put a neck gauge on here and make sure, see how straight the neck is. I think it's in pretty good shape. I think it's very good shape. I think it's, I think it's just about dead nuts right on. There's a little bit of a bow, a little bit of a bow, not a big bow, just a teeny tiny inky dinky baby bow. But we do have the wrench that came with it. So let's throw that on and we'll give it a quick spin, just a touch, and see if we can get that uh, bow out of it. All right, so after screwing around with it, I um, finally got the wrench back in, no big deal. It's sometimes goofy, and I gave it one spin back the other way and did about a quarter of a turn, and that laid the neck down flat as a pancake. So that's perfectly straight now, the neck. Uh, which is where we want to start from. So that's good. So that's our first adjustment um, is we straighten the neck. And we'll take a quick look at the action um, and see what that says. All right. So at the 12th fret, we want about to be about four. That's pretty good. We're very close. Might be just a trifle high, which we can adjust um, back down on this end. You know, down here is where you adjust the height of the strings, and we'll do that after a while. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do now, or the second or third thing, actually, is to take the strings off, um, and we'll replace the pick guard, which was the original job. We'll check all everything for tightness. We'll make sure all the screws are tight. We'll make sure the tuners are tight. We're going to replace these and put some new ones in uh, that we have the Fender Beta string trees okay these hold the strings down better than these stupid looking little goofy things we'll put the wrench back in the bucket so you'll have that when we're done uh, and now we'll just take the strings off with the super magic string unwinder and we'll just show you taking the first string off and then we'll do the same thing for all of them we'll take them all down and then while we're here we'll replace the string trees and try to do all this in, act in, uh, in order, in some kind of order. We'll take this one off. All right, and I can see that the tuners are loose, that they're wiggling uh, right before my very eyes. See this here, the peg is loose? So I gotta tighten up these nuts, because that's the only thing that holds them on. These don't have a nut or a screw in the back, okay? So we'll take and adjust all that, and we'll take these off and do this. All right, now, as part of setting stuff up, we're going to check these back neck screws and just give them a snug up and make sure they're tight, because you don't want the neck wiggling around um, and throwing everything off after you put the time in. Now, the next thing we're going to do is take the uh, back cover off, and we'll see how this is set up with the whammy, because we're going to swap out. We're going to do the white cover back here. All right? So there's one. There's two. And last, but by no means least, good old number six. So that's the black guy. Oh, this is set up good for the whammy. They set this up right. Sometimes these people with the strings on uh, coming across at a diagonal, that really screws it up because it doesn't put equal tension on the spring, so the two springs at a diagonal don't really um, add anything to the tension. So you're really running with one spring, um, just from the dynamics of it. So we've got the new white pickguard. Let's see how the screw holes line up. 
Uh, are we going to make it easy? Or do I got to drill new holes? I might have to drill new holes, but it'll, it'll be fine. We'll build around one and see if the other ones come in line. If they don't, then we'll drill them out. We might have to drill all new holes, but that's okay. We're not scared. So there's a protective cover on here of plastic. And what we'll do is peel that off. And usually there's two layers. So we'll go scooping after the second layer if it's there. If it's there, it'll peel up. If it ain't there, oh yeah, it's there. So here comes a second layer of plastic. So we can expect that on the front too. So if you leave that on, you'll be very protected, but not very shiny. It's not going to look like a shiny white. So that's that. Now we got to deal with screw holes. Um, well, I got two that are fairly close there. What if I come the other way? If I go to that one, I got two on this side that are fairly close. Well, they're actually other holes. They're way out there in left field. Um, so which gives us the best alignment to replace the strings on a regular basis? Either one. Both of them actually stink. It should be in the middle. Uh, but that would mean drilling out all brand new holes. Well, we could. Let's, as a matter of fact, let's do that. We'll line it up for where the strings have got to go through. And then we'll drill some holes. We'll start by drilling one and locking it into place. i got to go get my drills. I took them all and put them back. Oh, no, I didn't. I got them right here. I lied. Okay, so number one... Um, We'll replace the screwdriver with a drill bit and we'll hold it down firm and we'll place that as centered as we can and drill a hole. Not too deep. And then what we'll do is sink the first screw and that will allow us to lock into that position as we place the next screws. Well, then there's a hole. There's a hole. That's the one I drilled. No, it's not. That's the old hole. Let's go find the new hole. Oh, it's right beside the old one. So let's see how this is going to work out. Oh, I might be too close to the other hole. So that, see, now these holes are right on top of each other, but it's going to work out okay. I'm not scared of that. I just want to plug those holes, and the way we'll do that is with a toothpick. So I need five toothpicks out of my super secret method box. So the way we will do that is to take the damn cover off. And... What we'll do then is get a couple of toothpicks and we'll break them off. See, because they're very sharp on the end here. And that's not what we want. Well, that one isn't going to matter much. So we'll take that down and then we'll put one in the other end and take it down. All right, so that stuff's all set now. So we can go back and we'll put this one back where it was and be happy with what we've got. That's that hole. So we need a screw again. And we'll screw this in. On the right hole? Yes. So let's line this up. And we'll see if we've got any holes we can reuse. And then we'll come up here to the top corner and put this one in. And 
You don't want to go too deep because the screw will um, seat itself. If we let it. Okay, so that's good. So that's true. That's the position. So now I got to drill uh, five more holes, four more holes, and um, put the screws in. So I'm going to get the screw in. Right. So as soon as it's down the bottom, it stops. So that's that. So the back is done. Um, we're going to flip back over. Oh, and we got strings. These go through the um, through the body kind of strings. Can you see these? Yeah, you can. So what we're going to do is just push the strings out and get a grip on them and pull them all out. I got one that didn't come along. There it is. So I got all the the string ends out. So those are done. So now we got the pick guard free. The next thing we're going to do is free up the pick guard. We're going to take all these knobs and stuff off. And then we're going to have to replace. Oh, boy, that's hard. Replace the pick guard like we had talked about. All right, Timmy. Meanwhile, back at the ranch here, we're going to pry these off. And because uh, we're not going to use either of these or the pick guard, again. Uh, I'm not too concerned about damaging the uh, pick guard. All right, so that's those guys off. Now the next thing we've got to do is loosen everything up. So all these screws have to come out of the pick guard. All the screws have to come off of the um, that hold that hold down the um, pickups. And those will come off too. And then there's some uh, nuts here that we've got to remove that hold the volume control parts down. What am I in here? An 11? No, it's a 10. That should be right. It's not a 10, it's an 11. I lied. <laughs> it's a 10. Alright, so let's take this things out. And we'll take all the, um... Okay, so we got all the screws out of the pick guard. We're going to lift this up now. And we'll see how easily this lifts and how much room there is. Alright, and the controls all come out easily. We've got a little room to play around with. So you can see here's the five-way switch and the controls. And the ground wire coming from the back. So the next thing we've got to do is release um, the five-way control. There's a couple of screws for that. I'll put them up a little bit because they're a different size. These are smaller than the pickguard screws. And they're totally different than the other ones that are down here for the pickups. So those are out. Now, the next thing we've got to do is release the pickups, which do have springs in them. So we'll back these guys all the way off. Now, the other thing we can do is change the covers, I think, and uh, put white pickup covers pickup covers on the pickups and make the whole thing white. Um, no, I can't. Because I don't have the right ones for the humbucker. And that'll look funny. You can't have two blacks and two whites and all that stuff. It just gets goofy. I lost the spring. There it is in my finger. Thank, thank God we found it. So there's one pickup free. Humbucker is just two pickups that are woven together, kind of, to uh, eliminate feedback, kind of hum that can happen um, in an electric guitar. And that's why they're called a humbucker, because they try to stop the um, feedback from the pickups. Um, and the polarity, I think, or something like that is off. All right, so that's that. 
So now you can see the whole guts of the inside of this thing in the pickguard. So let's take a look. We'll line this up over and see how lucky we're going to get with holes. If they're all going to line up well. Uh, it looks pretty good. The only thing that's going to be funny is these and they're going to move up anyway. Um, for the humbucker covers. Because they'll shift. The humbucker will shift up a little bit out of place. Now the plastic covering protection. We're going to take that all off before we put this down. Because it's easier to get it off now. Without the screws in the way. Because the screws you up when you're removing that stuff so that's one layer so I think I'll take and cut out this is shielding tape that's on here that also prevents uh, hum and feedback um, from the instrument if it's well grounded so you gotta make sure the grounding's all connected and this pick guard is made pretty good it's got a nice area of shielding and this is not a big, heavy, high-cost pickguard. It's a nice three-layer, which is good, uh, but it only costs about 20 bucks, or 10 bucks. I'm not even sure. Um, with the two pieces, it might have been 12. I think we're ready to go. So let's take and peel off another magic layer of plastic, and we'll get down to the um, to the plate itself. There comes a second one. Now when you do this when it's down, you end up running into all the screws and the screws snag some of the plastic and you end up leaving it behind and you got this little plastic tail sticking out from under the screw, which is really annoying, I think. I mean, it just aesthetically makes it look like an amateur job. But then again, I am an amateur. I'm an apprentice luthier. I'm not full-blooded. I watched Dave's World of Fun Stuff, Canadian Luthia, who is incredibly good with all this stuff. Isn't that pretty nice and shiny? All brand new. So the first thing we're going to do is try to get the humbucker back. Actually, we should take and uh, make sure this is going to sit down right. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. So let's poke these guys through the holes and see how it's going to sit. Um... I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be just fine. So that looks good. So we ain't going to screw around with a lot of time doing that. So the next thing we've got to see is how free the screw is on this pit guide we bought. And it's too little. So I've got to take these and take a drill bit and drill it out just a bit so that the screws can slide through there easily. You see, you might as well see the whole game. And we'll do the other one. Now that'll allow us to have free passage of the screw so it'll adjust correctly. And then we'll wipe away the plastic debris from the hole. And there's another piece of debris sticking out there. Let's grab that. Pull it out. All right, so we're back to the humbucker placement. We'll place this humbucker. Now we've got to get a spring and put it in place. Let's go down here and we'll do this side first. And put a spring on. Bring it all the way down to the end. We'll try to get this up into the hummy hole and place the screw. Oh, I didn't put the screwdriver back in. Oh, do the one-armed bandit thing. See if we can get it in. And catch it. There we go. Now you're talking. We're cooking with castor oil here. Let's put that through. We'll push it through and put the spring on. And this is the hardest part to do of this job. Actually. Um, once you get all the other crap done, just trying to get this back through the right hole is a bit of a nuisance. However, so far, so good. Uh, 
All right, so that's catching. I can feel it on my finger on the other side. So that's that. Okay, so we got the humbucker in. Now we got to fix the second pickup. Place that up through the hole. And now we've got these other kind of springs. So let's throw the screw in first. And then we'll put the spring on. Good, I can feel it grabbing. That's good. It's one on a row. Now let's get this screw in. On the other side, we'll slide a spring in there. Good. Good. That's two out of three for where it belongs. Oh my god. Nice. I love it when it goes. <laughs> All right, so that's that. The next thing we're going to do is put the five way up. Now we'll just snug it up. That's good. All right, and then we've got the um, controls to place back through. Now, they don't have any bottom grippy thing on them. Sometimes there's a lock washer that goes in the bottom of this um, that they connect onto so that they don't spin and change their position. Um, so that's those three go there, like that. Are we good? I think so. Now let's get the washers, stick them on, put a screw on, so that they're all the way up in the cavity where they belong. And now we can do a drop down and see how our drop down test goes. It feels like everything is in place and that the wires are not binding on anything. So let's tighten these guys up while we're in a good position to do that. So that's the, the exchange. That's the pick guard change. We've changed over from the black, dumb, weird, funny, speckled, doesn't go with anything pick guard, and put the new shiny white one on that Timmy wanted. Timmy, you got the white. Now, the next question, should we use silver screws to put the pick guard back on, or should we go with black? Because i got a bunch of black ones we can do. Because I think, should we go black? I don't know. The silver, the chrome will go. We'll stay with the chrome. Because everything's kind of chromey. Not crummy, chromey. Let's, well, all these holes line up perfect. What a nice, simple thing this is. And there's a little piece of stupid plastic hanging out from under the screw. I told you that happens. Boy, that's annoying. I thought I beat that whole trick and I didn't. All right, so now we're white, 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 white. And that's the other thing we already did. Um, what else are we gonna do? Oh, we gotta do the other end. Um, the string trees. So let's do that. We'll take a quick break. Right, so we're back again. What we're going to do is just, uh, I had said that some of these were loose. And they all are a little loose. So the only thing that holds these things down is to screw from the top. And we'll just tighten these up a smidge to make sure they don't move when you got a string on there. Because between a whammy and loose tuners, You'll get go in and out of tune so often it'll drive you right up the wall. Um, so the next thing we're going to do while we're here in the neighborhood is we'll uh, take off the string trees and we're going to change to a better set of string trees, I think, that are more functional than the original ones. So I'm going to put the original screws back in and they'll go back into their old hole and fill it correctly because they already know what size they are. 
um, and they're not too small. So we'll lock these guys down quickly. We'll see if we can't run this down nice and tight. And that'll be the new string trees. And we're kind of all done with messing around. I'm going to clean up the fretboard a little bit and maybe hit it with some linseed oil just so that it's not dried out um, and help prevent it from drying out over the long run. And it'll shine it up too. Okay, so those guys are in place. So that's another thing all done. So the next thing we're going to do is um, just clean up the fretboard. Okay, with some linseed oil. All right, the other things I think we can do is do a quick polishing. I'm going to cheat on this a little bit and use a sanding block to put just a little bit of pressure on the frets and just clean them up. Okay. Okay. The volume controls now. We're going to go white, right? So let's do those. And then we'll clean the fretboard. So there's white. I got a bag of white um, five-way controller switches. And these are all a little different sizes. Uh, which is crazy because uh, they're all different sizes. Because different people make them. Uh, some made China. Some U.S. The U.S. sizes are different from the China sizes. China stuff is cheaper. The metal and the plastic and stuff is cheaper. I'm trying to get things to match up perfectly is not an easy task. So let's twist these all down, which they already are. The volume, ooh, excuse me, the volume control will put up, pointing straight at us this way. And that fits nice and tight. The tone control will do the same thing, line it up, push it down, bink. And the other tone control will put it on and push it down. And those are nice and secure now. Linseed oil. Let's come back up here to the fretboard. And what we'll do is get some linseed oil. Refined linseed oil. We don't want a whole hell of a lot of linseed oil. But what this will do is rejuvenate and um, fill in the rosewood here. Okay, uh, absorb into the pores and make the fretboard look like brand new, which is what it is. But it's been kicking around for a while now since it's been manufactured, you know. Um, so we cleaned it up. We cleaned up the, um, the frets. They're nice and shiny. So now what we're going to do is let that sit for a minute like we did and then wipe it all off. Because we don't want it soaking in there to death. We just want to fill in some of the pores in the wood, you know. Um, strings. And make it play. Timmy, I like your white. Your choice of white is very nice. Um, it's a good looking guitar. Come out really well. I'm going to get some wax. and We'll wax it up. I'll wash my hands and we'll string it up. Alright, now we did a little bit of inlay work, which I hope will meet with Timmy's approval, just as a bit of a surprise, because I know he likes the oriental flavor of things. And I thought that might work. If it doesn't, you can always take them off. Okay, sports fans. Timmy, it's string time. These are Ernie Balls. Custom nickel wound, 9 to 46. Um, maybe that's a little heavy. I changed my mind on the strings. We're going to go with the DR Pure Blues, 9 to 42. A little lighter gauge.
uh, for a little bit more to wang, if you will. All right, so here we go. We're going to take these guys out and uh, get personally involved with installing these now. All right. So we got to turn around to the back of the guitar. Here's the third, sixth in the third. Corrosion proof, it says. So now what we're going to do is flip the guitar on its side and go to the sixth position, which is way up here. And try to run it straight through. And we did. So now we've got to put the third string in. Counting from the bottom. One, two, three. How did we do? Oh, we did good. Sixth and third. Now we got the fifth and the second. All right, one of the last things we've got to do is to set the pickup heights. Um, and that's fairly simple and straightforward. You push down right at the last fret and see if this will clear the one eighth. That's a little high. That one's a little low. So this is a little high. We're going to give it a backspin. That's pretty good. That one's pretty good. That one's just making it. That's good. Now let's check the other side again. Okay, so that's um, done and in tune. So the next thing we'll do is we'll play it again. Meet you okay, on the now we're done. Whammy bar and all. Timmy. I'm going to plug this into the other amplifier just to make sure that's working okay. Thank you. Cool.